Hello, this is Richard with Janus Motorcycles. Um, and today I'm going to talk about our front suspension, our front fork. Our front fork, uh, the Janus 250 front fork, is might be one of the things you notice first about our bikes that's very different from what you're used to seeing. Um, this type of front suspension is called a uh, leading link fork. So when we say fork, it's because most modern um, motorcycles use two legs of the front suspension called the fork that support the axle and the front um, wheel. Uh, and they, their main, their job is to keep the wheel in line with the steering axis. Um, and so when you turn the, the handlebars, however, whatever kind of connection there is between the handlebar and the wheel, that everything is turning in line with that. And, it's, and the most important thing on a motorcycle is that it's a rigid, uh, direct connection. Um, so that there's no, there's no movement between your, your handlebars and the wheel. That's where you end up with bad handling. So um, this type of suspension is different than what you're used to today. And for the last um, 80 years, uh, the telescopic fork has been in um, common use. Uh, the telescopic fork is what we used on our first motorcycle, the Halcyon 50. And as, as the name implies, it's a telescoping arm uh, that comes out of the front fork. Um, and that provides suspension uh, travel, um, so it can uh, provide good handling, um, and it follows the uh, bumps in the road. There are some limitations with the telescopic fork um, design. Uh, that was first put in production by BMW in the 1930s, um, and they it was very apparent um, even then the limitations of the telescopic fork. Uh, the telescopic fork uh, suffers from the, the, the design means that there has to be an overlap between the fork leg and the, um, well, the, the tube and the, the fork leg itself. Uh, it has to always be overlapping and if that, it's a subject to bending forces. So the, those can provide uh, friction on the bushings. Um, all that to say in uh, very simply that it, it can limit the, the suspension travel um, over bumps, etc. And it's also, it can suffer from a lack of lateral rigidity. So if let's say you hit a, a bump on the side of the wheel, the, the two fork legs can operate in opposite, um, at different rates, meaning that you get a wheel moving this way um, relative to the bike. And again, you get that bad handling. Um, resulting in things as bad as a tank slapper where your handlebars are wobbling uncontrollably. Um, or before the telescopic fork, the uh, motorcycle design has gone through many different versions of front forks, Springer forks, girder forks, uh, telescopics. And then in 1950 or 51, a British uh, engineer named Ernest Earls developed what's called the Earls fork. And the Earls fork is a version of this, the leading link fork. And by leading link, we mean that there's a pivot here, and the axle is here. So when the suspension moves, this whole unit swings, and the linkage is, is ahead of the pivot. There are also trailing links. If you're used to a, a vintage scooter, or even some current scooters, the, the axle would be back here, so the linkage would be ahead of it. Um, that's called a trailing link. Um, the Earl's fork is a leading link design that was most, it was first used on the Douglas Dragonfly, and it's most famous and its use on BMWs from the late 50s through the 1970s when they went back to telescopic forks. You know, that's where they're most famous. And you're, what you notice here is that there's shock absorbers. It's not a telescopic fork. So that's the history of our forks. Um, we have chosen this design for a number of reasons. Um, the, w one of the reasons is that the, the technology required to manufacture telescopic forks is something that's a, a specialty um, uh, science. And it's something that even the main, the, the large manufacturers, you often will outsource that to somebody like a suspension engineer. We wanted to make these parts as close to home as we could. We wanted to have that control over our, our manufacturing. So we chose this design because we can manufacture the actual fork itself. And then we can leave the engineering of the suspension unit, which in this case is isolated to the shock absorber to an expert. In this case, we use Icon Suspension, um, uh, a very, a very well-known uh, well and well-respected and um, a fantastic shock absorber manufacturer that uses a traditional twin 
coilover shock absorber. Uh, the other reason that we uh, went with this design is that the leading link fork has a lot of benefits that the telescopic fork doesn't have. So I mentioned earlier the, the pro some of the issues with uh, torsional stiffness and, and, and just the, the rigidity of, of the telescopic fork um, and the fact that they can move at different rates, the fact that they can bend and reduce the, the they can have what's called stiction. Um, this design has a, what's called a, uh, we call it the fork horizontal or the actual leading link. It's, they're manufactured out of the same piece of tubing. There is no, there's absolutely minimal play side to side. This is a very rigid system. Um, we machine all the hardware for this. So the, the, the bolts that hold this together, the bushings that we use, the, the, uh, we laser cut these pieces. This uh, fork slug is machined by us. The whole system we manufacture, it's very, very rigid. And it has the added benefit of uh, reducing the dive. So another of the, the, the qualities of a telescopic fork is that when you apply the front brake under braking, the front end will dive. So those shock absorbers, all that braking force is pushed against the shock absorbers, the bike will dive to the front. And what that means is that your wheelbase changes, um, your rake and your trail change. So the whole bike is, the, the, the steering geometry is changing while you're riding. Um, especially in a corner where steering is the most uh, important. Um, this system has an in, like a, uh, built into it a, an inherent anti-dive characteristic. So as the front brake is applied and as the weight is transferred to the front wheel, the brake caliper is grabbing the front rotor and it's connected to the swing arm and so it's actually pulling itself back up with the brake. So when we first designed this front fork, we, we had a different ratios uh, here. And you can see up here on the wall, we, uh, we, um, we used some computer programs developed by uh, a guy named Tony Fole, who's a front, end, front suspension or suspension engineer based out of England, who's come up with a lot of very uh, innovative suspension designs. And he has a software package that, that we, we worked with early on, and we also talked to him. Um, and that helped us to start thinking about where the pivot needed to happen and what the geometry of the front end would be. And actually, when we first, the first versions we had, when, we, when you put the front brake on, it would like hop up from the road. Uh, obviously, we didn't want that. Um, so we kept re-engineering it, and we went through uh, a number of revisions, basically dialing back that anti-dive. So at this point, if you were to take a bike, one of our bikes, in the parking lot and push the front brake on it, push it forward, you could, you could feel it rise a little bit. But actually, under riding conditions, when you're riding, the bike holds essentially neutral um, with a perfect balance between the brake anti-dive action and the forward momentum of the rider and bike weight as you brake. So that allows you, the benefit of that is that you have consistent wheelbase, consistent rake and trail, and you have a consistent uh, 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 handling under braking and cornering all combined with the fact that we think it looks really neat, it adds to the distinctness of our motorcycles, and it allows us to make more and more parts close to home. That's uh, a brief introduction to our front suspension design. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we'll be doing more videos on more parts uh, every week. Thanks a lot.